This video presents an examination of the musculoskeletal system, including inspection, palpation, and range of motion tests of the head and neck, hands, wrists, elbows, shoulders, and related structures, feet, ankles, knees, and hips, and spine. In this video, the examiner will assess a healthy patient. Keep in mind that other patients may have the same normal findings or may exhibit normal variations or abnormal findings. The extent of the musculoskeletal examination depends on the patient's condition and symptoms. As you examine the patient, ask him to report any tenderness and be alert to facial signs of distress. Inspect the spinal profile, observing the normal cervical, thoracic, and lumbar curves. Also, inspect the spine for lateral curvatures. There should be none. Dr. Next, ben ask Allen the patient to bend forward and touch his toes. A lateral curvature may become more up? evident with this movement. Then watch as the patient bends forward again. Good. The normally concave Good. lumbar curve should flatten out. Now sit behind the now patient and stabilize his pelvis spine. with your hands. To assess lateral bending, have and the patient right bend to the is. right. Good. And now your left, and left. as far as you can. Now bend back. To check extension, you. ask him to bend back toward you. Fine. And to assess rotation, twist right have him twist his shoulders to the right. And your left. And to the left. These movements should be symmetrical and done with ease. Okay, now if you'll rest both hands on the table, I'll feel along your spine. All right. And you let me know if you feel any tenderness. Sure. Finally, palpate the spinous processes for tenderness. and the paravertebral muscles for tenderness and spasm. How about in the muscles here? Do you feel any tenderness? No, it feels all right. Assess the patient's hips, beginning with hip mobility. Ask the patient to bend his knee to his chest, pulling it firmly against his abdomen. He should be able to flex his knee and hip without difficulty while the opposite thigh remains near the table. Now let's check other movements that you're Next, hip. test hip rotation. Flex the leg to 90 degrees at the hip and knee. Then stabilize the thigh with one hand and grasp the ankle with the other. Now move the lower leg medially so that the femur rotates externally at the hip. Then move the lower leg laterally so that the femur rotates internally. Finally, abduct the extended leg until you feel the anterior superior iliac spine move in the opposite hip. Repeat these maneuvers on the opposite now side. Check on the other side. Okay. If a hip is painful or limited in motion, palpate for tenderness in three areas. First, palpate deeply below the inguinal ligament and lateral to the femoral pulse for the hip joint and the overlying iliopectineal bursa. Second, with the patient lying on his non-painful side, palpate the greater trochanter of the femur for the trochanteric bursa. And third, palpate the ischial tuberosity for the ischial bursa. Finally, have the patient stand and again inspect his feet and knees, noting any deformities. Okay, good. I'll have you turn around and we'll look at the back of your knees now. As the patient turns around, observe for any swelling in the popliteal spaces. Inspect the patient's knees, noting their alignment and any deformities. Note atrophy of the quadriceps muscles or loss of the normal hollows around the patella. Then palpate the suprapatellar pouch on each side of the quadriceps, noting any thickening, swelling, or tenderness. Also palpate along each side of the patella. Identify any thickening, swelling, or increased warmth. Repeat on the other side.
If you suspect a small amount of fluid in the knee, look for a bulge sign. First, milk the medial aspect of the knee firmly upward with the ball of your hand to displace any fluid. Next, press or tap the knee just behind the lateral margin of the patella. Watch for a bulge of returning fluid into the hollow medial to the patella. None is seen here. In another patient, there is a positive bulge sign. If you suspect a larger amount of fluid in the knee, check for a balloon sign. To do so, rest the thumb and index finger of your right hand on each side of the patella. With your left hand, compress the suprapatellar pouch back against the femur. Feel for fluid entering the spaces under your right thumb and finger. If you feel it, a balloon sign is present. If fluid is felt, Press the patella backward against the femur with your right hand as your left hand feels for fluid returning to the suprapatellar pouch. A palpable return of fluid confirms a balloon sign. None is felt here. If the patient has a history of knee pain, compress the patella and move it against the underlying femur. Then push the patella distally and ask the patient to tighten the knee against the table. Pain and crepitus suggest a patellofemoral disorder. Now flex the patient's leg at the knee to about 90 degrees. With your thumbs, press into the tibiofemoral joint on each side of the patellar tendon. Feel along the tibial margins. Tenderness from a damaged meniscus may be present here. Then palpate along the course of the collateral ligaments, laterally and medially. Okay, uh -huh. good. Let's try the other leg now. Now, with the patient lying down, inspect the patient's feet and ankles. Note any deformities, nodules, swelling, corns, or calluses. With your thumbs, palpate the anterior surface of each ankle joint, noting any bogginess, swelling, or tenderness. Feel along the Achilles tendon for nodules and tenderness. Test for tenderness of the metatarsophalangeal joints by compressing the forefoot between your thumb and fingers. Evaluate each of these joints by palpating the metatarsal head in the sole of the foot and compressing the joint between your thumb and finger. To assess the range of motion of the feet and ankles, dorsiflex and plantar flex the foot at the ankle. Next, stabilize the ankle with one hand and grasp the heel with the other. Then invert the foot at the subtalar joint and evert it. Now stabilize the heel and invert the forefoot at the transverse tarsal joint and evert the forefoot. Finally, flex the toes on the metatarsophalangeal joints. There should be no limitation of movement or pain. Now assess the range of motion on the opposite side.